So experiment 15, molar mass of a metal. Um, to figure out the molar mass, we need to have both the mass and the number of moles of the same sample. The mass is easy, we get that on the balance, but the number of moles we're gonna determine indirectly by using PV equals NRT to determine the number of moles of hydrogen, and then the balanced chemical equation to figure out how many moles of zinc that is. Okay, so this is the data that we gathered in the first video. And I'm just gonna use this data and walk through the steps about how to do calculations for the lab. The first calculation that I'm gonna do is the volume of hydrogen. <clears throat> so we had the burette inverted, and so it went from 0, 0.00 to 50, and then, so this is the end that has uh, the stop cock and the tip. But there was this area in here, and we didn't know what the volume was because it's unmarked. And so at, before the experiment began, um, I filled it up with water to the 50, and I let it drain into a graduated cylinder, and so we've determined the volume that isn't measured. And then as hydrogen was generated, it displaced the water until the meniscus came down to here, 20 to 7.44 milliliters. So the amount of hydrogen contained is everything between 27.44 milliliters and 50 milliliters, plus that extra little bit. So here I've done the math, uh, 50 milliliters minus 27.44, and then I'm gonna add that extra bit that was in the unmarked um, area. So I come up with my volume in milliliters, but because we're using PV equals NRT, because there's R present, we have to have pressure in atmospheres and volume in liters. So I've uh, converted to liters. The next calculation I want to talk about is the pressure of the hydrogen gas. So this one's just a little bit tricky, but uh, we have what was filled with water, but now some hydrogen has been has displaced the water. So we have a trapped volume of hydrogen gas. But because it was collected over water, there's also some water vapor present. And so the pressure inside the burette pushing down on the water is the pressure of mostly hydrogen, but also some water vapor. We can figure out from a table how what the pressure due to water vapor is at the temperature that the experiment was run at. So we're gonna have to subtract out that pressure due to water. But we have pressure inside the burette pushing down and then atmospheric pressure pushing down and they're both having a push of war uh, with this water. And it looks like atmospheric pressure is winning because the water level is lower outside the burette than inside the burette. So if I wanted to figure out um, what the pressure of hydrogen is, I would need to recognize there's a pressure of hydrogen and water inside the burette pushing down, and then there's some extra pressure uh, due to the height of the water that is also pushing down. So at this place, where atmospheric pressure is pushing down, uh, hydrogen, water, uh, hydrogen, water vapor, and water liquid are also pushing down. So the pressure of the atmosphere is equal to the two gases plus the difference in the height of water. Typically, we think of pressure in units of um, atmospheres or tor, and a tor is a millimeter of mercury. And so if we had a way of converting these millimeters of water into millimeters of mercury, we could just, uh, we could deal with the units. Tor, 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 tor. So, this part of the lab is a little bit tricky, and there is an explanation that goes into detail about what pressure is, it takes into account surface area, and you can read that for understanding um, if you want. Or, you can just uh, work with me sort of conceptually and loosely right here. So we know that one, milliliter, one milliliter of mercury has a mass of 13.53 grams because the density of mercury is 13.53 grams per milliliter at ambient conditions, like room temperature. And we know that one gram of water would occupy a milliliter. So mercury is 13.53 times more dense than water. If I wanted to have the same mass of water and mercury, I would need a height of a column of water that was 13.53 uh, milliliters 
compared to one milliliter of mercury. So um, the, the pressure of the mass of water being pulled by gravity, the weight, divided by the area, that's pressure. And what I'm gonna do over here is say, I know that this is pushing down and it's 22.80 um, centimeters of water, which would be 228.0 millimeters of water. And if I wanted to figure out what an equivalent size of mercury would be, let me divide by the density of mercury. So I know the units don't look like they're working out here and in the lab, the units do cancel out properly. It's a little bit more complicated, um, but it would take 16.8 millimeters of mercury would push down with as much force as that 228 millimeters of water. Okay, so now uh, the atmospheric pressure read from the barometer was 773.8 torr. And I'm gonna subtract the pressure due to the height of the column of water. And I'm also gonna subtract the pressure of water to isolate the pressure that is just hydrogen. Once I find my pressure of uh, hydrogen gas, then I need to convert to atmospheres because I'm using PV equals NRT. So that's how we do the pressure of hydrogen calculation. Okay, over here. And so I'm using the gas law to figure out the moles of hydrogen. Uh, I rearrange, plug in my values, come up with a number, and then I use the balanced chemical equation that says one mole of zinc reacts with acid to produce one mole of hydrogen. So in this case, for this problem, it is a one-to-one -one ratio, but that is not always true. And then I take the mass of my sample of zinc and the moles of, high, of uh, zinc that were contained in it, find the ratio, and I have a molar mass. My molar mass is only good to three sig figs uh, for reasons, oh, right here because my volume is only good to three six. So now I have a molar mass that's experimental and I want to compare it to the known. And the known is just the molar mass that you find on the periodic table. So experimental minus literature from the periodic table divided by literature times 100%. When we subtract, the sixes subtract out in the tens place and the fives subtract out in the ones place. And so we're only going to end up with one six six. It's okay that it's negative. That simply tells us that what we did experimentally was lower than true. Okay, that's all I got. Thank you.